Welcome to Shorty Super Coach. How are we, guys? Uh, a little bit of a later one today. We've just got back from the gym, and just one of those nights where things are a bit out of whack. I've just been fucking around, taking a while. It was real weird. I woke up at like three o'clock at night, and just you know when you wake up, and normally sometimes you wake up and you just fall straight back to sleep. I had this bloody cough, and I was up for like an hour, and I was like far out, bro. So then when I got home, had a sneaky little nap. And just threw the whole schedule out. So, but that's okay. We'll uh, we'll keep on rolling. We're nearly at the end of the term. We got tomorrow. Then I've got a couple of holidays, a couple of weeks holidays. Next week will look a little different because I'll have I'll be in the Sunshine Coast from Wednesday to Sunday, which will be a bit of fun. So we'll go live on Tuesday, and then I'm not really sure if we'll get a YouTube video out for the preview. Um, I'll certainly get a TikTok out because I can do that just on my phone, but I don't think I'll be able to do it. Um, YouTube upload style, but um, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll get stuck into it. A few of the things we're talking about today, there are a few names that came up consistently on my Q&A, so thanks for everyone who dropped in there, and a lot of it's just about finalising our sides and, and really mapping out who's an upgrade, who's a downgrade, and will you actually need to cash gen from this play? You know, I think some people are like, oh, do I go this person or this person? Will they make money? What's their job security like? Ideally, a rookie stays in our team, but at this stage, it might just be handier to just bank an extra 30 or 40K regardless of their future prospects because we should be looking to get 23 or 24 premiums. I mean, they gave us 40 trades, so we should be able to have some bench coverage with premiums. So I think we can cut it pretty fine down to one or two trades, but if you've got 24 primos, you should be laughing. So another thing I want to ask you guys, right? So I'll ask this on the TikTok. I like to put these little questions out there every now and then, but you ever had a maxi bond, your ice cream operation? Quality stuff. But I put it out there, are you eating the ice cream first? So holding biscuit, eating ice cream first, then finishing off the biscuit? Or are you holding ice cream, eating biscuit, or are you a bit of a bit from both as you go? There's only one right answer. If you are eating the ice cream last, no, Yes, if you're holding that ice cream and you're eating the biscuit first, you are a psycho. It's It's got to be biscuit because it just makes sense. It just makes sense the way you hold it. It doesn't break apart. I reckon I'm going to have one Monday. I'm going to put that out to people on, on the old TikTok because uh, I put a poll out and it was it was scarily even. So scary stuff. Anyway, um, let's have a look at these teams, shall we? Now, the te- look, it's starting to get frustrating, a few of these teams, and I've just clicked on the fixture anyway, but um, Carl Warner's been a disaster. I've already looked at these because I did my TikTok video. So Salem out will hurt a few, and Brown, that's a killer. You know, come in as a sub, then be dropped. That hurts. So I'm really liking the look of Tholstrop. Um, I really think he's the sort of guy... I've compared him to Bailey Humphrey. I, I can see him pumping out some 70s and 80s and playing the remainder of the year for the Demons. Will Ashcroft's certainly one to look for in your draft um, and certainly one for our Supercoach sides next year. Um, Dow, where is he? Dowling holds his spot. That's good. Hopefully can avoid the sub. Um, otherwise, nothing too crazy going on there. Um, I talked about Lawson Humphreys. I didn't know if he'd debut just yet, but he's certainly one that, from a Cats fan, should get lots of opportunity. He may get the occasional sub, but he should get lots of opportunity. Um, And then nothing too much. Some may have brought in Caddy, but... um, Then we've got Rogers goes out, McRae goes out, Schultz goes out. Not that that's relevant at all. I was thinking of Lockie Sullivan. Um, and then the Pies do get a few back. Richards might help some. Darcy comes back. Wardlaw out injured may hurt some. It certainly may hurt some draft teams. And then Warner. I mean, it's just a killer, isn't it? Absolute killer. He comes in, he's sub, and he's dropped. I mean, I did say last week that Brandon Walker was probably the concern, but I didn't anticipate Draper coming back. I guess he's come back for Pierce. So it's a bit harsh, I reckon. You come in, you play well, then you sub. Then you're out, so just another reason I fucking hate the sub, but anyway. Um, Blight comes in, he'll be a watch for many. Some might have already taken the punt on him 
expecting him to play. And then Wanganay Miller comes back. Boak may help some. Um, and then, yeah, Harley Reid coming back will help a few as well. So um, some a bit going on in the team. So there's a little bit to have a think about there. In terms of my trades, good riddance to Clayton Oliver. He's gone. In comes Connor Rosie. He's at a fantastic price. I really wanted to get Sarong in, but because Oliver went so bad and a couple other bits and pieces, I really can only do one. So it's going to be Alex Sexton down to um, probably Tholstrop, or it could be Humphreys. I'm just going to have to... What I've got to work out is, will I need Tholstrop to make me money? Like I was saying at the top of the video, because I would love to get an F7. I'm using Frazier as an upgrade. So basically to walk you through my thoughts. And where's McKercher? Where is this guy? He dominated the VFL. Could we just get him in? Goodness gracious me, I forgot about him. Um, so Oliver will go to Rosie. Sexton down to um, Tholstrop potentially. I'll have to have a suss of how crucial that extra 50k might be. But yeah, Frazier's going to be... Clark's an upgrade to Sarong next week. Frazier, I'm hoping to upgrade to either Raul when he drops a bit more potentially, or even Warner, who's on a serious drop. Now, that might seem a little wild, but I think it can be done with the cash I'll have left over. And then it comes to that question of, well, if I want an F7, it really has to be an upgrade of Dowling. How much longer is he going to be in the team? How much cash? It's, I don't want all my eggs in the, in the Dowling basket. It could be risky. So maybe I need another potential score in Tholstrop. But... I'm just going to have to weigh it up. That that extra bit of coin may be more advantageous to, to bank. So I'll just have a bit of a look at that. But that's basically my plan. So honestly, I'm looking at having one trade and 25 premiums. That would be my ideal. One on each line with dual position flexibility. So that's the hope. But some of these guys... Look, I really like Caldwell. The only small rider on that would be... If and when Darcy Parrish returns, how does that affect him? I mean, it's got to affect him somewhat, but he's playing fantastically well, and I really like him as an option. He's, he's part of that new Essendon midfield that's looking really, really good. Jai Simpkin, I'm not going to talk you out of it, but it's one of those ones that I've, I just don't love. So I still feel like he's playing good footy, but I don't know if he's really part of that. Like, he's not a lock for the midfield every week. He's... I'm feeling a bit of Ben Keys last year about him. You know, when he's in the middle, he's a very good option. Wins the inside footy, but I just get the sense that he may be shoved out of there at times to give options to younger players and maybe he gets caught on a flank too much. And we saw what happened to Keys. His role changed and he was no good. But at the price, it's hard to say no. So I totally get where people are coming from. Tom Green, we held the faith. He paid it off. People talking about bringing him in. To be honest, a bloke scoring 150 under 500k, it's pretty rare. I'm not saying he's absolutely back in town, but I think he is certainly a good option if you need someone for a finalised midfield position at a good price. Jack Steele is another... The way I sort of look at Jack Steele is a bit like I was looking at Tom Green. I think if you've got him, you just, you just hold out. And even if he ends up being an M8 or an M9, if he comes good, great. But... I don't think they're going poor enough to trade, and I've got faith in both Green and Steel. So they're not going poor enough, and it may just depend if you can afford to do that little luxury trade. I saw a few people going a bit sideways on their trades, and hey, if you've got plenty of trades to do that, go for your life. But really, it's crucial to map out your last four to six trades, because you don't want to get with three trades left, and you're like, oh shit, I actually need an extra upgrade. This hasn't worked out how I thought. Far out, I'm going to fall a premium short. Damn it, I, I, what was I doing sideways trading Raul and Steel and Tommy Green? So it's worth thinking about and just planning out for your own individual team. Clayton Oliver goes. A lot of people doing Oliver to Rosie. That is a clear-cut one. And Matty Raul, hold the faith. I mean, I've always said I thought he was going a bit overs at the start of the year. I feel like he's between 105 to 110 averager. So he's just kind of come back to the field, and he's a little out of sorts. But he'll come back. He'll be okay. So I don't think there's any need to panic and trade. And then, of course, Charlie Kerno, Jeremy Cameron, a few guys being talked about to finish off our forward lines. I really do like Cameron and um, Kerno. I, I would probably prefer Kerno. Not sure how much I cut myself off there. But, yeah, Kerno and Cameron, 
I still think Cameron will play a fair bit of time up the ground, even with Hawkins out. I think Shannon Neal will play that deeper forward role. Cameron's still a really good option. So, um, look, I think a few people were asking, you know, what do we do, like, with this forward line? I think Rankin's a must-have. I'd be prioritising him above the Caldwells and the Dylan Moores and the Charlie Kernos. But if you can't afford him, then I totally understand. Um, Alex Sexton, some people are like, oh, is he a keeper? He won't be a keeper. So his numbers with Will Powell in the side, they do change. So he's certainly not a keeper, but there's no rush. I'm just trading him because he's probably not going to make too much more money and I need the cash. So I don't think you want to hold out for him uh, being a keeper, but certainly there's no hurry to get rid of him. Now, a few people are asking like, well, geez, what's a discount forward option if I need to find one? <clears throat> um... Like some people were saying Joe Danaher, I'd much prefer Kerno and Cameron and they're cheaper. Um, in terms of discount options, we talked about those key forwards. Can Shea Bolton find some form? I still think he's capable of averaging 90 when he gets on a hot streak, but it'd be a bit of a punt. Um, Simpkin, of course. Myers is probably a reliable 85 to 90. If the Cats can find some form, he can average in the early 90s. But if not, he may hover between the early to mid 80s, which wouldn't quite be what we're after. Does Toby Green find form? He hasn't all year, so I wouldn't be putting my eggs in that basket. Um, and look, to be honest, there ain't much. We, we may just have to bide our time. You know, obviously, Powell plays a bit of mid, but he's, he's hurt us this year, so... Um, I think Rosie's a clear in this week. And what I would say is that things do pop up. I know the forward line may feel tough. We might be feeling a bit tight for cash. But every now and then, one of our premiums gets a head knock and comes off in the first quarter. Or they roll their ankle halfway through the second. And they score 36. Or they score 16. So you sometimes just find players that just bob up. So at the moment, just be patient. If nothing's on the horizon just yet, you never know when a good player has acquired a game or gets tagged and just scores a 50. So hopefully um, we can get a few options coming through. Chad Warner's certainly one of those. But um, in terms of my VC and C, I think Gorn has to be strongly considered. There's a bit of talk about Bonson Pally being a late withdrawal and back soreness and that type of thing. So... Happy to steer clear from him on the VC. Plus, he could get a bit of uh, Will Phillips' attention. But, hey, last time he was sick throughout the week, he came out and dominated. So I would be looking at probably Gorn as your VC or maybe a Heaney, Goulden, Warner, Sarong. But just remember, you know, Hayden Young will probably go to one of them and James Jordan probably goes to Sarong. So keep that in mind. Brody Grundy is certainly a consideration I wouldn't really be looking at Zach Butters. I feel like he's going to respond soon, but I think Windhager will go to him. I feel like we've never had to consider the tag more than ever. Like This is, you know, it's right on us. But I think probably starting with Gorn and finishing with a Swan or a Docker or maybe Nick Dacos. But I've still got to make my final decision. Not 100% sure. And Sam Flanders, you know, he's always a bit of a sneaky option. Dane Zorko, you know, food for thought. But... Um, yeah, would love to hear your ideas on, on who you're going with the captain's options. So, yeah, I think that's about, about all. Is there any way I need to hear? No, not really. I think we've covered it off relatively nicely. So, good luck for this week. I hope it goes well. And, yeah, I'll talk to you soon on Sunday night. Cheers.